Um, basically, I just wanted to add on the my research uh, opinions. Like, I had a field work, and I came to know that, uh, as he mentioned, that uh, the workers basically don't know who to fight with. Like, uh, they are still they. Uh, the workers who are really deprived, they don't, they are not still getting into the idea of unionization. But the, uh, there are two layers of informal workers: the ones who are really deprived and one who are doing, uh, doing okay, okay. So the workers of the upper tier, they now want to get into unions and get the thing, making it from spontaneous to continuity, as I mentioned. But the ones who are really deprived, they are still looking out for jobs. So, um, so that I said, it, they really need to know who to fight with. So that's one of the issues. We have questions. That's why I'm listening. It's uh, how to organize the working class uh, in post borders, and it's uh, uh, is the question. But I think it's absolutely necessary to do so. Uh, because, you know, I, I think in the first instance, you know, we, I did speak of Fordism in mean, these large factories uh, that uh, have gone at the time of even in, in, in India to a great extent, uh, but they do not represent the major form of industrialization because of uh, the dispersion of a lot of industrial production to begin with. And that, um, yes, it's much easier to organize a plant on the basis of a socialized environment that Marx talks about uh, if it produces immiseration but also socialization creates the basis for creating uh, alliances that are crucial for uh, organization and, and political activity. However, it doesn't happen again by osmosis. It actually has to be put into place. And I actually think the work of uh, the uh, a number of union organizations, uh, including the ones that uh, uh, the Bigot organization is engaged in, has solved that problem. It, the big question, I was just at the, the American Sociological Association meeting, the International Sociological Association meetings, and I can tell you the questions that you're probably asking every single day are at the very top of the list. New forms of work organization, informality, uh, precarity, and that's it. And those are terms that I, I've been talking about for many years, um, but not in the same sense. Um, okay, by, by noting the importance of new forms of worker organization, I think really what we're referring to are the fact, is the fact that many of the new forms that are necessary are in fact trying to true old forms where organization takes place on a community basis within neighborhoods, uh, within the, uh, I know that the organization of Begul is doing a lot of this important organization within the mobilization within neighborhood bases, within the places where workers uh, exist because increasingly industry, not just in the north, but here is being dis dispersed. And so it's very difficult. There's a great book by Ira Katz Nelson called City of Trenches to give city trenches, in which he makes the case that in the United States that you know what you have is a separation between the workplace and the worker communities. And that, that separation could be in the, in the basis of many kilometers away. But I think in India and many countries of the third world it's very different. In fact, I'm convinced of it based on my, my research uh, and also reading a number of secondary books, <coughs> that there is a huge tendency for workers and communities uh, to abut and are adjacent to uh, gigantic areas where there's production. In fact, traditionally, uh, you had maybe small shops and so forth, even in the north, but they weren't large. But in the surrounding communities where you could find the workers, or at least specific communities, whether they're ethnic communities or otherwise. Uh, I think actually geographical, and if I use this term, spatial organization is crucial. Um, a lot of people are talking about it. I don't, I don't want to throw that word around because it's a loaded term often. But what I mean by geographical and spatial organization is essentially the idea that you organize people within their communities. Um, 
because we have to understand the, the, the real world in which people live and which, where, where people work. I can give that a great event. Uh, I think that um, the question of the category is very uh, well taken. Um, uh, that, um, and I think it deals with the point, uh, the point, the argument it is that there's some workers that are uh, more uh, primed to organization, they're, they get higher wages perhaps, they understand their uh, needs and their class needs in some ways, and then there are workers who are just entering labor markets who are in fact much poorer. I think you're probably referring primarily to women workers. I think their work in construction is uh, really outstanding on this step. I mean, my, my point on this would be, that, again, actually to uh, evoke uh, Marx's, uh, I think, extremely prescient phrase. And many of you here may know it. It's, uh, we are all, and it goes back to spontaneity to begin with, that uh, workers uh, are workers in themselves. Uh, we all know that you know, we're all workers in themselves, but uh, unlike the ruling classes or the upper classes, we're, we're not a class for ourselves, frequently. But I actually am much more optimistic about that possibility because I, I think that we see the uh, kind of the embryonic forms of development of, of class consciousness, really class for itself, that acts for itself. Which I think actually that this could be a seminar of maybe 12 lectures in you know, our entire semester. But how does that develop? And I think just to jump too quickly, uh, but I think it accurately organization is important to recognize and also education is important. And the, one of the big phrases of the American socialist movement uh, was ed, uh, educate, organize, agitate. Uh, and in that context it's important. But uh, I, I've looked at a number of works uh, by uh, PhDs and new scholars uh, who are actually examining this question of how do we move from a class in itself, the objective reality that we are uh, embedded in a class position to a class for ourselves where we'll actually act even in the most rudimentary fashion to form a union and so forth. And I think that's um, something especially women workers have to recognize and they are often excluded. In fact, mostly excluded. We really need to make consideration of the gendered nature of working class. Not in the kind of discussion that uh, Point on Andre Gortz and Kathy Weeks, and I, I love Sylvia Ferrici's work too, but um, I think she recognizes the importance too, the idea of spatiality. So I think she understands that women are highly exploited, she's a Marxist, and she understands the degree to which the material labor really is one that's based on class exploitation. I think your work is very important with respect to construction. Just very briefly, I'll let you go on because you may want to cover some of these other questions. Uh, and I could as well, I mean, last night, I can certainly cover it if you want to as well. But the point about, I mean,